Welcome to Servants of the Lord Ministries. My name is Dr. Keith Jenkins. I'm the International Coordinator for Servants of the Lord Ministries. Before I start my message today, let me share with you the commission of the ministry that was given to Joseph Hedgecock, the founder of Servants of the Lord Ministries, many years ago. He said, I have children in every nation, and you have brothers and sisters whose hearts are crying out to me. They sought me for ministry, blessings and gifts. I've given them those things, and it's blessed them. But there's a part of their spirit that it never fulfilled that is reserved for an intimate relationship with me. Now their hearts are crying out to me just for me. That is who I'm sending you to, because I don't want them to take the years it took you to get to me because there was no one to show you how at the time. Servants of the Lord Ministries is a teaching and training ministry sent to the body of Christ to reach people with a heart after God. This message is for those who want to get to know Him, grow up in Him, and be ready for His appearing. Today I'm sharing a message on thinking. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm reading verse 12. Wherefore let him that thinketh he stands, take heed lest he fall. Verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. The word temptation in Strong's is number 3986. It comes from another word which means putting to proof by experiment of good or experience of evil, solicitation, discipline or provocation, by implication, adversity, temptation or extra trying. In the Living Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 12 to 13 says, So be careful if you are thinking, Oh, I would never behave like that. Let this be a warning to you. For you too may fall into sin. But remember this, the wrong desires that come into your life aren't anything new and different. Many others have faced exactly the same problems before you. And no temptation is irresistible. You can trust God to keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. For he has promised this and will do what he says. He will show you how to escape temptation's power so that you can bear up patiently against it. At salvation, the consequences of sin woke you up to the fact that you were using your mind to make decisions and you humbled yourself. If you also accepted the Lord Jesus Christ by humbling yourself, grace appeared and you began to live in the light as he is in the light by confessing your sin. Paul said in Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 to 14. This is in the book of Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Verse 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The word darkness here in Strong's is number 4655 from the base of another word meaning shadiness, that is obscurity, literally or figuratively darkness. Light comes through trials and difficulties but also through other saints who have endured the correction and chastening of God too. You do not need to repeat the lessons of those who have gone before you. You can get the light from those walking in the truth. The devil has filled the leadership of many churches with those who have not paid the price to follow Christ consistently. They have academic qualifications and a confidence in the flesh that they can understand the things of God using their minds. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6. I'm reading Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And you have he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2. 
where in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. Verse 6. And has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In the Living Bible, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 6 says, Once you were under God's curse, doomed forever for your sins. You went along with the crowd, and just like all the others, full of sin, obeying Satan, the mighty prince of the power of the air, who is at work right now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. All of us used to be just as they are, our lives expressing the evil within us, doing every wicked thing that our passions or our evil thoughts might lead us into. We started out bad, being born with evil natures, and were under God's anger just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, He loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead and doomed by our sins, He gave us back our lives again when He raised Christ from the dead. Only by His undeserved favor have we ever been saved and lifted us up from the grave into glory, along with Christ, where we sit with Him in the heavenly realms, all because of what Christ did. In the Message Bible, Ephesians 2, 1-6 says, It wasn't so long ago that you were murdered in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it. All of us are doing what we felt like doing when we felt like doing it. All of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. And then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with Jesus, our Messiah. The devil's powers are limited, but he appeals to those who have lost their first love in the church, seeking the desires of the flesh and mind that should be bringing light to others, doing God's perfect will in complicated situations. The Father, by grace, has put you in Christ, in the kingdom of God, far above the devil who cannot do anything unless you first yield to the flesh. James said in James chapter 1, verses 12 to 15. This is the book of James, chapter 1, and reading verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Verse 13. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Verse 15. Then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. In the book Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 1, Foundations of Spiritual Maturity, 2016 reprint version, in chapter 3, on laying foundations, on page 53, Joseph Hedgecott writes, Do not give yourself permission to resist a situation or run from it when your flesh tries to react. If you choose to trust the Lord and do what He says, in spite of what your flesh is saying, He will provide the grace and strength to obey. The promises of God will only work if you abide in Christ. Those who come out are first drawn away by the lust of the flesh and sin. 
anyone with a confidence in the flesh will fall into sin, especially in the last days. You will need to be in the Spirit and use godly wisdom in challenging circumstances. Patience is essential under trial because you need to hear God and not respond to the loudest voice you hear. We read in Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. This is in the book of Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Open sin manifested in the children of Israel in the wilderness, and they died because they would not accept correction. The Jews did not have any external temptation in the wilderness from other godless nations. They even had the cloud to keep them cool in the day and fire at night to keep them warm. God fed a whole nation in the wilderness for 40 years. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, this is Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. Verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In the draft of the book, Three Infallible Witnesses, 2023 edition, in the section, Hearing God's Voice, Joseph Hedgecott writes, If you do not actively trust God, you are in the flesh, and everything you do is sinful. In nearly 50 years of teaching people how to hear and know the Lord, I have found that most believers say they trust God, but they do not. Confidence in their natural, mental, or physical strength, their abilities, and their intellectual knowledge of God shows that they do not trust Him completely. The evidence of absolute trust in God is that you do not depend on your natural understanding or abilities. When you trust Him with all your heart, you refuse to rely on your abilities and intelligence. Instead, you acknowledge, ask Him about everything. When you decide what to do, you have confidence in yourself instead of the Lord. You do not trust Him with your whole heart. In the Amplified Bible Classic Edition, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. And He will direct and make straight and plain your paths. In the Message Bible, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Mankind was designed to serve the living God, not a dead religion. Those who do not acknowledge him in all their ways are not functioning properly. You were designed to trust God with all your heart and not figure anything out with your mind. You now have a heavenly father if you're born again. We read in the book of Isaiah 55, verses 5 to 9. I'm reading the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, starting in verse 5. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Those living in the light know he is near through regular conviction. 
They use the grace of God to repent of thinking in complicated situations. At the final judgment, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. But not everyone is using their faith in God to establish Jesus as Lord now. Churches are taught to use their faith just to get the blessings they want. Those who are redeeming the time are always obeying the Spirit, making no excuses for the flesh, repenting and using their faith to follow Christ. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 to 17. This is in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. Verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Verse 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Verse 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of these things which are done of them in secret. Verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Whatsoever does make manifest is light. Verse 14, wherefore he says, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Faith is like a muscle that needs regular exercise. On the narrow way, your faith gets used all the time because you're living by faith. It gets damaged, used for the wrong things. If you ask for patience, you'll end up with trials and difficulties to stretch your faith first. Your faith must be pure for you to have an incorruptible inheritance and live on the narrow way. Foolish believers in the church are on the broad way, comfortable, doing what they want, when they want, if you believe that version of freedom, you are deceiving yourself and others. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, starting in verse 13. Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in that way. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. In the book, The Guilty Prison, Revised Edition, in the introduction, on pages 4 and 5, Joseph Hedgecott writes, When Satan prevents you from walking through the straight gate, and on the narrow way, you are already on your way to spiritual destruction. If he can separate you from fellowship with the Lord, because you follow the broad way, he has succeeded in stealing spiritual life from you. If you can be imprisoned by lusts of the flesh or addictions, Satan will use those methods. If you will not yield to that type of imprisonment and are determined to walk with God, Satan will seduce you with ways that seem to be right. You may have no intention of being deceived. You do not yield to the lust of the flesh, nor are you consciously rebellious. 
yet you know you're not growing spiritually as you should. You may be confused and frustrated because you seem to obey the rules, but your daily life proves you're not spiritual. When you submit to ways that appear to be right, Satan makes these methods comfortable. He convinces you that you are righteous when you are actually deceived. Then you have no desire to change. If this describes your spiritual life, you are held captive in Satan's guilted prison. Without Jesus making the right choices, you will have just temporal gain in this world and nothing eternal. Your faith becomes very precious when you get answers in complicated situations that are worth more than gold and the comforts of this world has to offer. There are just two denominations in the body of Christ. Those who love their flesh more than God and those that love God more than their flesh. To overcome sin and the devil, change your priorities. We read in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. This is in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, I'm starting in verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he hath but a short time. The devil is angry and looking for those who will serve him and through the lust of the flesh deceive others. Christ has paid the price for you to live in the kingdom of God that is here now. Jesus said in Matthew 18 and verse 3. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, I'm reading verse 3. And said, Verily I see unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will need all the resources of the kingdom of heaven to complete your mission on earth by faith. Faith is simply trusting God that he's trustworthy to do what he said he would do. He has done his part and said it's finished. For you to abide, become like a little child and submit when chastened by the Holy Spirit and repent. Paul said in Second Corinthians chapter 1 verses 17 to 21. This is Second Corinthians chapter 1. I'm reading verse 17. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh, that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? Verse 18. But as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. Verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. Verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Verse 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ has anointed us is God. Paul did not use lightness to correct the Corinthians. He had to rebuke them. But he was anointed and brought grace and truth so that those who wanted to repent could do so by getting in Christ. Everyone who believes has access to the promises in Christ. If you get in the flesh, it shows your faith is not pure. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, this is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7 and verse 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Christians keeping outward traditions and Bible principles so that they can still do what they want when they want are deceiving themselves if they think they're pleasing God. False prophets are known by their lack of godly fruit because in complicated situations they go back to the flesh and cannot follow Christ consistently. Paul said to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 13 to 16. This is 1 Timothy chapter 6, I'm reading verse 13. 
I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickens all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Verse 14. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Verse 16 who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honour and power everlasting. Amen. Those who have pure faith are here to serve in divine appointments and rely on the Holy Spirit to lead them. They are not fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. God can use them to give the truth in complicated situations because they love the truth. Jesus said to his disciples in John 15, verses 9 to 11. This is John's Gospel, chapter 15, and read verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments... You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. If you believe God loves you, then you will let him make all the decisions in your life. Continue in his love by keeping his commandments you will get the wisdom of God and the joy that comes from pleasing the Father by faith. When you obey, Jesus and the Father make their abode with you. Jesus said in John 14, verse 21. This is John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. His commands are pure. Do not miss any opportunity to obey God instantly. God is not selfish. If you are trying to hear the Lord, start with any air of conviction that He is showing you. He will give you grace and truth to obey perfectly if you repent. His first commands to repent remove the weights and sins so you can run your race faithfully. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 4, this is Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Verse 4. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Those things that you are holding on to in this world, persons or things, are weights that your faith was not designed to carry. Your faith was designed for God alone, to do what he said he would do. Those weights are evidence that your faith is not pure. Every child of God with the gift of eternal life can get to know God and keep his commands. If your motive is love, you will dialogue with him and get all the answers you need. Your mind will become faint, thinking and processing truth. Keep your mind still and ask more questions if necessary. Do not be tempted to compare yourself with others. You only have grace to be what you are supposed to be. Remember that you are following Christ, not a method of doing things. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and reading verse 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. In your former spiritual condition, cut off from God through sin, 
You are heading for hell using your mind. If you are still sinning, then you do not have the mind of Christ working fully because he never sinned or made excuses in any area where you are being tempted. You may not know what is the right thing to do in a complicated situation, but you should be convinced by now that by listening to your own carnal mind, you will serve the prince of this world again. We read in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. This is Genesis, chapter 3, I'm reading verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. But the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word subtle in Strong's is from another word which is a passive participle of another word meaning cunning or usually in a bad sense, crafty, prudent, or subtle. Under pressure, Eve made the wrong decision. The devil brought Eve to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that mankind was not to take from. Your desire for knowledge that you think you need to make decisions will get you out of Christ and back in the flesh. Even if you can gain one bit of knowledge, then you need to know more and more. You will never have all the pieces of the puzzle. You will forever be anxious and end up hiding from truth and conviction when you make mistakes. Jesus is the only one qualified to use the knowledge and wisdom of this world because he overcame the cross and never sinned. Paul said in Romans 14 and verse 23, he that doubts is damned if he eat, because he eats not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. By using your mind to make decisions, you are sinning. Jesus is Lord now. By taking over the Lordship, you are not trusting God with all your heart, as you were designed to do. Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 26, and reading to verse 32. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, starting in verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Verse 27. Which of you by taking thoughts can add one cubit unto his stature? Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Verse 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that ye have need of all these things. 
Be steadfast in your relationship with God. Recognize that you do not need to use your mind for anything you need in this world. Trust him and ask God what you need to do. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. This is 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Verse 11. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. In the book, The Guilty Prison, Revised Edition, in chapter 3 on unseen chains on page 29 joseph edgecott writes when you habitually sin and yield to the flesh satanic spirits gain access habitual sin in specific areas sends a signal to satan he sees your rebellion against god in specific areas he then sends demonic spirits associated with your sins to entrap you these spirits amplify the lust of your flesh and seduce you with deception they tempt you to resist the work of the Spirit that will bring you to repentance. In a sense, you move into a maximum security prison because satanic spirits control you. They intensify your bondage. If you want to be free, you must fight against the flesh and the satanic spirits that are attached to specific sins. One example of this would be someone who is addicted to alcohol or drugs. The devil also gains access to amplify rebellion, fear, anger, resentment, bitterness, depression, oppression, and many other sins. Today's addictions to electronic devices and social media are also influenced by him. If you're not overtly rebellious, but try to walk with God in spiritualized flesh, Satan will minister religious spirits to you. He will bind you with erroneous church doctrines, religious methods, and self-righteousness. You will follow the letter of the law instead of the leading of the Spirit. You'll be quick to judge others and condemn yourself. Many are just waiting for Jesus to come back as they see darkness increasing. Those who are humble have established Jesus as functional Lord of their own lives already. Peter told those scattered by the persecution, in challenging situations to humble themselves. There is no defense against the power of darkness unless you are submitted to God and casting all your cares upon Him. God may help those who still have a fear of suffering and prevent baby Christians being destroyed, but you must resist the devil and learn how to fight if you want your life to bring glory to God. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 7 and 8. This is Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading verse 7. Be not wise in their own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. God has given you everything you need to depart from evil with the reverential fear of the Lord. Go slowly and do not make any decision before it's time with your own mind. Your mind should be still, so that when he speaks, you can hear him. Expect the Holy Spirit to bear witness to the truth. We read in the Psalms, chapter 46, verses 8 to 11. This is in the Psalms, chapter 46, I'm reading verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he has made in the earth. Verse 9, he makes wars to cease. Unto the end of the earth he breaks the bow and cuts the spear in sunder. He burns the chariot in the fire. Verse 10. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. In the book Wake Up Time is Running Out, Volume 2, Growing Up Spiritually, in Chapter 7, 
on the joy of my salvation, on pages 114 and 115, Joseph Hedgecott writes, Years ago, I was in the security business, and I worked at a large outdoor restaurant. My job was to keep people from sitting on the cars and enforce the rules of the business. I had to deal with drug gangs. I believe I was going to be killed doing what God said to do. When I finally had a major confrontation, not only did I have the peace that passes all understanding, I had joy. The presence of God came on me in a strong way as I faced 25 men who were planning to kill me. All I wanted to do was laugh, but the situation was not laughable. I faced the gang leader who was a big man and tried not to grin. I felt no fear or terror. I told him to either obey the rules or leave. He replied, I am not doing either one. My answer was that he had no choice. He had to do one or the other. The leader said, are you crazy? I can snap my fingers and you are dead. I replied, go ahead and kill me. When you do, the owner will call the police and they will come and arrest you. Either way, you are leaving. He was so angry, his veins were standing out on his neck and face. All of a sudden, fear came on him. He waved his hand in the air, and all of them ran to their motorcycles and left. I stood there with peace and joy, wondering what had happened. I always had a reputation of being cool under pressure, but this went beyond what I thought was possible. It was amazing how you can hear the Lord Say something in a threatening situation because you have his peace. If you do not have his peace, your mind will try to find another option to deal with the situation. I had no thoughts or plans as I faced the gang because I knew God promised to take care of me. Psalms 34 and verse 7 You do not have to rely on common sense or worldly wisdom anymore. Baptized in the Spirit, Joseph Hedgecock was given the boldness and the power of God to resist his flesh that was hindering him from doing what God was telling him to do. His mind and secular training was telling him he was going to either die or end up in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. The power of the Holy Spirit did not need to drive out the demons in those motorcycle gangs serving the lust of the flesh because Joseph had pure faith in God. He had a relationship with God, trusting God to do what he said he would do in that situation. If his faith was not pure, there might have been a very different outcome. We read in Psalms chapter 34 verses 7 to 9. This is in the Psalms chapter 34. I'm reading verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivers them. Verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Verse 9. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Have you been delivered from all your fears in complicated situations? If God delivers you into something, he will deliver you out. You do not need to get any special training. God provides situations daily where you either lean your understanding or Ask him what to do when you feel helpless. Hear and obey his voice and you will get a spiritual education in these last days. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords, no matter what others do. You just need to listen, trust and obey him out of love. Peter said in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 16. This is Second Peter chapter 1 and reading verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. When Jesus came the first time, Peter saw the majesty of Jesus with his own eyes. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords, but he did not overthrow the Romans with a legion of angels or remove the religious leaders building their own kingdom. Instead, he died on the cross for his enemies. Peter saw Jesus pay his taxes from a coin taken from the mouth of a fish. We read in John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. 
This is John's Gospel, chapter 6, starting in verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Verse 54. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Verse 56. And he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells in me, and I in him. The food of the kingdom is doing the perfect will of God, using whatever God provides. Keep yourself clean with the forgiveness of sin so that you can hear his voice all the time. Jesus did not use his divinity or consult his own mind. Instead, he asked the Father, who directed him to specific solutions, and through it grew in wisdom. You can do the same. We read in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. This is in the book of Revelation chapter 17. and reading verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, chosen and faithful. A baby lamb on its own is an easy target. But if you make war with the Lamb of God... You will be overcome. He came to serve and not to be served. Jesus was on God's mission. He was representing the Father. Jesus might have appeared weak, but one with God is a majority. Have faith in God who called you and gave you his promises to complete your mission on earth. Those who are called, chosen and faithful in challenging situations now will come back and be part of the first resurrection, and rule and reign with Christ. John said in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, this is 1 John chapter 2, I read verse 1. My little children, these things write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Verse 4. He that says, I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. You are called to glory and virtue. And Jesus has provided his commandments, so there's no excuse. He knows what you need to do next. His commandments are transmitted when you're in the Spirit to your mind. Paul said in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. This is Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds while I write them. Verse 17. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Your mind is his writing pad and for his use only. Those who have a confidence in the flesh are busy using their minds so that they cannot hear. Make a fresh start if necessary. Be reconciled to God so that you can hear and keep his commands because he is ruling now. If you keep disobeying him, you will not rule and reign with Christ. Everything you can do in the flesh, you can do in the spirit with God's simple instructions. Those who are not obeying his specific commands for the sake of their flesh are deceiving themselves and others. Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, verses 10, I'm reading to verse 17. This is John 14, starting in verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words which I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father which dwells in me, he does the work. Verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works. Then these shall he do, because 
I go unto my Father. Verse 13, In whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Jesus' commands are very different for everyone, but you get kingdom resources to do it his way in complicated situations. If God is going to get the glory, he has to provide the means. Those disciples had to maintain his priorities and listen to his instructions through the spirit of truth. Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. This is in the book of Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If Jesus is not your first love, you will depart from the truth and sin, because you will listen more to your flesh than to God. Before you start hurting those who you were supposed to love, help, and serve, deny yourself completely. If you start seeking something for your own flesh, the devil gets access again. Use the grace of God to do everything out of love for God through his commands. Everyone is a servant in the kingdom. If you are still self-seeking, you will get in the spirit and come out again very quickly. Deny yourself and try to stay a bit longer in God's presence. But consulting your mind for the sake of your flesh, you are not trusting God. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. This is in the book of Romans chapter 8. I'm reading verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Sin is anything contrary to God's perfect will in thought, purpose, and action for your life. It is possible to overcome sin by faith, listening to and obeying the Spirit all the time. There are reasons why you sin. The daily challenges that come along expose those reasons. God, in His grace, gives you time to repent of the lies that you have believed in your heart using your mind, deceiving yourself for the sake of your flesh. Confess your sin, and you will get all the help and forgiveness you need in the kingdom of God. If you use up that time allocated for repentance, it will be harder, and you will still have to repent. Do not make it harder on yourself. God is not harsh and not condemning. But those who continue sinning will be judged because they're carnal. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. This is Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, and reading verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. If you keep using your mind and natural wisdom, you will become puffed up and deceive yourselves that you have everything you need. Only godly wisdom will deliver you from evil. Those seeking righteousness please God and take no thought about their future. They are concerned only about pleasing God and staying in right standing with him, so they can hear his voice. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 20 to 22. This is Proverbs chapter 2, I'm reading verse 20. But thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. Verse 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, 
and the perfect shall remain in it. Verse 22, But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Do not compromise on righteousness for the sake of some earthly needs. Through the fear of the Lord, follow the way that is righteous. You can identify the path easily, so do not deceive yourself. Paul said in Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. This is in the book of Romans chapter 14 and reading verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You need God's righteousness by faith to maintain peace and joy in all circumstances. Those who see Christianity as a, another religion are not seeking righteousness because they think they already are. James said in James chapter 2 verses 18 to 21. This is in the book of James chapter 2. I'm reading verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith with out thy works, and I will show you thee my faith by my works. Verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, and thou dost well. The devils also believe and tremble. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? No one is declared righteous by saying a prayer at salvation. We are justified or declared righteous by doing works of faith consistently. Abraham, by having Ishmael, was helping God. Abraham repented and his faith in God had to be tested. Are you guilty of helping God? Jesus Christ died in our place so that by the grace of God you could hear and obey his voice all the time. Consulting your own mind is trying to help God based on the knowledge of good and evil taken from the wrong tree. The same trials in your life will continue until you repent of helping God. Paul said to Titus in Titus chapter 2, 11 to 14. This is in the book of Titus chapter 2, I'm starting in verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You may have ignored what has been available in Christ for nearly 2,000 years because you listen more to your own flesh than you do to God. The one making the decision for your life is the one who has to provide all the resources. Only God knows what you need to overcome the devil, the world, sin and iniquity to do the works that please God. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 14 verses 12 to 16. This is in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, I'm reading verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Verse 13. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Verse 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looks well to his going. Verse 16. A wise man fears and departs from evil, but the fool rages and is confident. If you do not trust God with all your heart, you'll end up on a way that seems right. You'll be covering up an absence of joy that comes from pleasing the Father through a close relationship with Jesus. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 to 14. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm reading verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, 
but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Faith in his promises produce godly character in your response when there's a price to be paid following Christ. Natural wisdom appeals to the flesh, but that is not something Paul was teaching. Anything other than the pure, naked truth is a lie, even if it appears to solve a situation temporarily. Those who use positive confession in Scripture to change their circumstances are deceiving themselves. If God does not direct you by His Spirit to release faith into something by conviction, it won't work. Using Bible verses to get something you want for the sake of your flesh is witchcraft. You will end up believing lies and have unbelief, not faith, trying to discern spiritual things using your carnal mind. Paul said in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, this is in the book of Romans, chapter 6. I'm reading verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. In the book Wake Up Time is Running Out, volume 2, growing up spiritually in chapter 14, The Battle for Your Mind, on pages 222 to 223, Joseph Hedgecock writes, You have only two choices. You're either yielding yourself to sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. Let me say it again. There is no third choice. You're either in one kingdom or the other. Believing that you can be neutral is another satanic deception. Have you ever believed this lie? You may not think that you are choosing the wrong kingdom, but your fruit reveals your choice. If you are in the flesh, you are in Satan's domain. He can influence your thoughts even when you do not realize it. You may not be aware of it, but God knows the exact moment you yield to the flesh. When you choose the flesh, you give authority to Satan. When you yield to Christ, you move out of the natural satanic realm into the spiritual realm in the spiritual satan has no legal access to your mind the enemy cannot program your mind when you're in the spirit satan activates programs he has already placed in your mind because of decisions you made in the past when you are in the spirit all of the sin that you have not dealt with is covered by god's grace they are not charged against you until it's time for the Holy Spirit to deal with them. Believers obeying the truth on the narrow way are transformed consistently, relying on God's grace and mercy. If you do not have the truth, then you have swallowed lies instead for the sake of your flesh. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. This is in 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Verse 23. Being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Verse 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Verse 25. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. For more information on how you can develop consistent, fervent love for God and others, please read the book How Love Grows by Joseph Hedgecock. Primary fruit of obeying the Spirit is an ability to love in complicated situations. By loving God consistently, you will sow love into God and get love back. This will give you enough love to remove selfishness and develop Christian love. Some are hard to love, but with your heart purified, 
and some godly instructions you will be able to love fervently in complicated situations. You cannot change yourself by using your mind, but if you love the truth, you see conviction as a blessing. In the Living Bible, 1 Peter 1, verses 23 to 25 says, For you have a new life, and it was not passed on to you from your parents. For the life they gave you will fade away. This new one will last forever. For it comes from Christ, God's ever-living message to men. Yes, our natural lives will fade as grass does when it becomes all brown and dry. All our greatness is like a flower that droops and falls. But the word of the Lord will last forever. And his message is the good news that was preached to you. Your spiritual life was not based on just a thought that Jesus died for you on the cross. When you first received the word at salvation, you did so because you were being overcome by sin, reaping the consequences of using your mind, serving the flesh. You were reaping what you were sowing. You actually listened to God for the first time. He got your attention. You were being Lord of your own life and needed to repent. It came at a time when you had run out of your own ideas. If you have changed, you will not be overcome by sin anymore and keeping his commands. John said in 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. This is 1 John chapter 5, I'm reading verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. By obeying his commands, you will get to know him and overcome. By obeying the Holy Spirit, you will serve God devil-free, just like Jesus did. The kingdom is not visible, but it's here. You can be part of it by keeping his commands that are revealed by the Holy Spirit, doing the will of God consistently. Jesus is Lord and does not need any advice on how to do anything. You can be part of his kingdom now by obeying the Holy Spirit in every area. If you want to live in darkness, keep using your mind to make decisions. But you're choosing ignorance and destruction. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. This is 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'm reading verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Verse 5 having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Those who are carnal who want to live comfortable lives will support those teaching lies they want to hear rather than the truth. Every carnal believer will talk about the power of God, but will not tell you to ask God everything. Those who are wise in their own eyes will not escape evil. Those looking for something comfortable for their flesh, like methods where you do not have to deny yourself daily and take up your cross. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 16, verses 11 to 13. I'm reading John's Gospel, chapter 16, starting in verse 11. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. Verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak 
of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he shall show you the things to come. Stop using your mind to come to truth, because by doing this you are exalting yourself above God. Jesus described the devil as the prince of the world, and he did the same. The devil is using earthly riches to build his kingdom in this world, so he can do what he wants when he wants. The devil has many followers in the church because this lifestyle appeals to the flesh in those using their mind to make decisions. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 31 and 32. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and reading verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. The word judge in Strong's is number 1252 comes from some other words which means to separate thoroughly. That is literally and reflexively to withdraw from or by implication oppose. Figuratively to discriminate, by implication to decide. Or reflexively to hesitate, contend or make to differ. Or discern or doubt, judge or be partial, stagger or waver. You should be resisting and doubting and judging your own thinking in complicated situations and rely on the Holy Spirit to discern the will of God. If you are not resisting your own wisdom, when convicted you may end up resisting the Holy Spirit and being condemned with the world. Jesus has paid the price for you to come to the truth without ever consulting your mind. James said in James chapter 1 verses 5 to 11, this is in the book of James, chapter 1, and reading verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally, and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall fade away. Verse 11. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withers the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace and the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. According to James, humble situations are better. Maybe you don't agree, because you've been listening to false prophets who say you can serve two masters. James said in James chapter 3, verses 10 to verse 18. I'm reading again the book of James, chapter 3, starting in verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and curses. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Verse 11. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Verse 13. Who is the wise man, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie against the truth. Verse 15. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Verse 16. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Verse 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. By 
using just natural wisdom, you are still conformed to this world. Jesus paid the price for your mind to be reprogrammed, to hear and obey the Holy Spirit in all circumstances. The programs he puts in your mind are not self-seeking, so you can do what is pleasing to the flesh, but godly and right in the sight of God and will work under pressure to make the wrong choice based on earthly gain and worldly wisdom in trials and difficulties has serious consequences. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3 verses 14 to 22. This is in the book of Revelation chapter 3. I'm reading verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. And I would, thou were cold or hot. Verse 16. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Verse 17. Because thou says, I am rich, and increase with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salver, that thou mayest see. Verse 19, As many as I love I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. Verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Verse 21. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcome and am sat down with my father in his throne. Verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. It is impossible for you to get godly wisdom using your mind because his ways are higher. Comfortable Christians can use human wisdom for the sake of their flesh and deceive themselves that they're spiritually prosperous, but they're not. Those following earthly gain are, number one, wretched. The word wretched in Strong's is number 5005 from the base of another word or derivative of another word mean enduring trial that is miserable or wretched. Number two, miserable. The word miserable in Strong's is number 1652. comes from another word which means pitiable. Number three, poor. The word poor in Strong's is number 4434. It means to crouch, akin to, and an alternative, a word meaning a beggar or cringing, that is a pauper, strictly denoting absolute or public mendecency, although also used in a qualified or relative sense, properly means straightened circumstances, literally often as a noun or figuratively distressed, beggarly or poor. Number four, blind. The word blind in Strong's is number 5185. It comes to another word which means opaque, as if smoky, that is by analogy, blind physically or mentally blind. Number five, naked. The word naked in Strong's is number 1131, which is of uncertain affinity, nude, absolutely or relatively, literally or figuratively naked. You should be denying yourself and let God direct you what to do in complicated situations. Time is running out. If you need a remedy for your situation, Jesus has the answer. Stephen said in Acts chapter 7, this is verses 48, I'm reading to verse 60. This is Acts chapter 7, I'm starting in verse 48. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as says the prophet. Verse 49. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Verse 50. 
Hath not my hand made all things? Verse 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so did ye. Verse 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Verse 53. Who has received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Verse 55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Verse 56. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Verse 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. Verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Verse 60. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. The flesh does not like truth and conviction. Those who resist the conviction of the Holy Spirit are the servants of the devil, killing and hating others. If you're resisting the Holy Spirit, your heart is not changed. Stephen was just a deacon in charge of the kitchen, feeding the poor in the first church. He was not one of the apostles, but a disciple, nevertheless filled with the Holy Spirit in a high state of revival. Jesus said in John ten, twenty-seven and 28, this is John's Gospel, chapter 10, I'm reading verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You may look like a lamb led to the slaughter, following Christ, but Jesus looked like this too. You are a true child of God, up to the level you are consistently acknowledging him in all your ways, under some level of pressure. Only those who are led and controlled by the Spirit will not end up on a way that seems right or plucked out of his hand. When you get in the flesh, there is no protection, no assurance of salvation or deliverance. Many put their faith in pastors and some formalized training to prepare them for every situation. Then they complain when life becomes complicated. David said in Psalms 23, verses 1 to 5, this is in the Psalms, chapter 23, starting verse 1. A Psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. Verse 3, he restores my soul, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Christianity is not just another religion, but a relationship with a living God, where you actually pass through many trials. God's kingdom has no end, because there's no corruption in it. Nothing gets contaminated, as everyone in the kingdom is doing the will of the Father, even the angels. They are happy because they know God sees the end from the beginning. His kingdom is here now, and the Father is faithfully transmitting his perfect will for those who believe God is love and want to serve on this earth. 
Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This is in the book of Romans chapter 12. I'm reading verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You are privileged to have access to the mind and heart of God by grace through faith. If you're born again, by staying humble, you can experience life as God planned you must deny yourself and take up your cross daily. Jesus is coming back for those who are not conformed to this world. Paul said in Romans chapter 7 verses 18 to 25. This is in the book of Romans chapter 7. I'm reading verse 18. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Verse 20. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Verse 23, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity the law of sin, which is in my members. Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Paul recognized he was wretched, living in a body of death, using his own mind. If you use your mind to understand the things of God, you will corrupt what little truth you have to serve the devil's counterfeit version of Christianity by using your mind to decide anything, you will come to the wrong conclusion because you do not have all the information. Only God has all the information and you can trust him with all your heart if you believe he is who he says he is. If you want to hear, get to know and follow Jesus, then I can recommend this book, My Sheep Hear My Voice by Joseph Hedgecock. If you want to make a fresh start and get on the narrow path, so in the Spirit daily, experience full salvation and freedom through regular repentance, then I can recommend the book Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 1, Foundations for Spiritual Maturity by Joseph Hedgecock. If you want to grow up spiritually, not be earthly minded and come to maturity, then I can recommend the book Wake Up, Time is Running Out, Volume 2, Growing Up Spiritually by Joseph Hedgecock. Do not accept a counterfeit version of Christianity based on religious works where you do not have to deny yourself daily and trust God. If you know that you have resisted the truth and want to know why, then I can recommend the book The Guilted Prison, Revised Edition by Joseph Hedgecock. You only need a certain amount of information as a soldier of Jesus Christ. In the army of the Lord, information comes on a need-to-know basis. God knows what the devil is doing. You don't need to know the strategy of warfare. All that you need to know comes through your communication with God. He has put you in high places above the devil, in Christ, so that your communication with God is secure. You just have to abide in him by trusting God with all your heart. Thinking is a dangerous occupation. There is a time and a place for everything. Only God knows what you need to think about now, as otherwise you will lose your peace. Your mind was not designed to store all the information you need to know. 
Your mind belongs to God. It's his writing pad. By listening to him, you will get enough to think about. You belong to God now through creation and redemption. If you have not yet become a living sacrifice to God, do not leave it a minute longer. He is faithful and he knows you better than you know yourself. Father, I pray for those who are listening to this message. You know what they need to do. You know them better than they know themselves. So, Father, I pray that you would speak to them and show them that you are completely trustworthy and you can put thoughts in their minds that they need to listen to, not other thoughts that this world is throwing at them. And, Father, that they may have that peace that you have provided for them, that they can hear and be still in, in troubled times ahead. I pray for them that they will have that peace and joy if they're obedient and just listen to your voice. And meditate on what you want them to think about, not what they want to think about. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You'll find a summary of the scriptures used in today's message below the video, either written out or via a link to a website. Our contact details will follow at the end of this message. God bless you and thank you for listening.